I picked up the stainless steel brake lines for the Bel Air. If you look at one of my past videos here, the wheel cylinders, three of the four, the right rear was the only one wasn't leaking. The wheel cylinders have brake fluid in the boots. They hadn't leaked out externally yet, but because I hadn't checked the brakes in like 20 years, I thought I'd pull the drums and have a look at them. So it doesn't need shoes, but it does need uh, wheel cylinders. And if I'm going to put wheel cylinders on it, it's been probably 40 years since I put hydraulic lines on it. So I picked up these at inline tube. The, they're all stainless steel. I'll, un, I'll unzip tie this here in a second so you can see it. But this is, this is what I got, and you can kind of see the cost. So that's the total. There we go. We got everything undone. So this is the, the fitting that goes on the differential for the two. This is one of the lines for the differential. This is one of the other lines for the differential. These are the lines that go from these, and there's a right and a left to these. So if you order them, make sure you get a right and a left. These, well, you know, the the line from the master cylinder will go to one of these. One of these will go down to a wheel cylinder. This will go across the chassis below the engine to um, the other, actually it goes around this way. If this is the front of the car, or the rear of the car, I mean this is the front of the car. That will go on from one of these to the other side where one of these, one of these, and then this line will attach. It goes back to the diff, and then this will attach to that line that goes to the diff, which will attach this line and this line, which go to the uh, wheel cylinders. These are all the clips for the brake lines under the car for the wheel cylinders. And again, I showed you here everything I ordered. So if you want to you know, redo the brake lines on your 59. I think the 60 Chevy's the same way. Now this kit is for a power drum brake system with the single reservoir. They make them for dual reservoir, power, non-power. They make them for non-power, single reservoir. You can get them in mild, you know, regular steel or stainless steel. I want with stainless steel, I use these on the Galaxy also with stainless steel lines and they fit perfect. I was really happy with them. And the reason why I'm going with stainless steel is brake fluid is hydroscopic. And what that means is it absorbs moisture like salt. Salt absorbs moisture. It's hydroscopic. So I see these people on YouTube all the time. They replace the brake hoses and the wheel cylinders and the master cylinder or whatever. Sometimes not even that, but they, they never see them replace their metal lines. And brake fluid, being hydroscopic, absorbs moisture like a sponge. And on these cars, the brake system is open to the atmosphere. And now they don't have that rubber. It's a little hole in this cap. Let's see if I can show you. Right there. See that little hole? And that vents that to the atmosphere. So that brake system can ab absorb moisture like there's no tomorrow, which it, they do. And that's why that was one of the faults with the old systems. Not only did was a single reservoir, you know, you, you have an open system to the atmosphere so it can get extra moisture in there. So that's not good. Now this master cylinder is less than two years old. So I'm going to clean it out and flush it and reuse it. The wheel cylinders will be all new. Everything will be new in the hydraulic system. The shoes are fine. The springs are fine. So I'm just going to reuse all that. But I was looking at maybe I thought I might go with DOT 5 brake fluid because it's hydrophobic. In other words, it does not absorb moisture. DOT 3... Dot 4 and dot 5.1 are glycol based. This is what I am going to use. But they are glycol based, and that's why they're hydroscopic. To where dot 5 is silicone based, it's like a water almost, and it's hydrophobic. But what I've read and I talked to 
some people that have used it in the past is it still can get moisture in it. It just doesn't mix with the fluid. It'll be like a droplet, say, in the bottom of your wheel cylinder. And you push the brakes and get that, those things hot, your braking components hot, the water boils, turns to steam, and then you have a spongy pedal. And in, you can't mix that 5 with that 3, 4, or 5.1. I don't know why they call it 5.1. Like they didn't call it 6 or something like that, but... You cannot mix that 5 with any other fluids. You can mix your 3, your 4, your 5.1. They're all glycol based. That won't really hurt anything. But the only difference I think, I think uh, the dot 3 is 250 boiling point and dot 4 is 260 and dot 5.1 maybe 270. I might be wrong on that, but that's a you know approximate. Uh, boiling points for them and that's why you would use maybe a dot four in a in a uh, disc drum system because the disc caliper will get hotter than the drum wheel cylinders so anyway that's kind of a breakdown of what i'm going to do on the bel air it's going to get all new stainless steel hydraulic lines new brake hoses that's the one to the axle these are the ones to the to the wheels or the front wheels I mean that one goes from the chassis to the axles so anyway we got all of, all the parts except for the wheel cylinders I can start probably get the car jacked up now and start tearing things apart on it to get all the old hydraulic system off and we'll put all new on it and then I won't have to worry you know with the stainless steel lines if the brake moisture or the brake fluid absorbs moisture it won't rust the line from the inside out though as I was saying earlier I see people on YouTube all the time replacing these and wheel cylinders but not putting new or even looking at the steel lines and even if they look good from the outside the ones on the Bel Air look really good but like I say the problem with, with the light here the ones with the, the uh, you know, this regular brake fluid that absorbs moisture. See, there's the brake line. There's one of those little clips that came in the kit to replace. There's another one of those little clips. But you can see the brake lines on this car look fine. And, but they could be rotting on the inside and then they burst. You know, they look good there, but that could be totally rusty on the inside for moisture in the brake line. So these people that don't replace these hydraulic lines on 50, 60 year old cars have been parked for 30, 40 years and they just put those hoses and cylinders on are really still taking a, their life in their hands if they're still running a single reservoir system of that. One of those lines, steel lines bursting. So that's why, and then, and these are just regular steel, they're not I made these up and put them on the car back in the early 80s. It blew one of the, the hydraulic line back in the, about midway on the car to the rear brakes. It actually blew the line, but I still surprisingly had brakes. It was a small enough pinhole where it leaked out and the pedal would go to the floor, but it would still stop the car. So after that, I replaced every single hydraulic line on the car. and. Yeah, it's just, that's, these have been on the car for probably 40 years anyway, so we'll put stainless on and I don't have to worry about them rusting out on the inside. You may ask why I'm not replacing this, why I'm replacing everything else. Like I said, I was brand new two years ago. I sucked the fluid out of it and put new fluid in the master last year and I probably, you know, I'll clean it out. But generally every couple years I'll just hit siphon the fluid out of this and top it off with fresh fluid. And don't say, you know, like, okay, I got this fluid here, it's unopened, right? So I got another bottle right here. It's open. This was from the Galaxy when I did the Galaxy. See how it's about maybe to there. I'm not gonna use it because 
<coughs> who knows how much moisture that absorbed. Now I could put this in a jar or something and put it on a vacuum pump and get all the moisture out of it, but for as inexpensive as this stuff is, I'll probably throw this away and use this because usually I buy the smaller containers except for when I'm doing a whole new system like I am on this. Then I'll buy the bigger one because, you know, I'll use quite a bit of it because I got to flush, you know, it all through. And this, I'll, pro I'll probably, when I get to bleeding it, I'll show you how I do it. Got the wheel cylinder, so I have everything to do the brakes. So I'm going to start jacking up the car and working on it. Now, if these videos are a little convoluted, that's because I'm going to do this job over the course of about three or four days. I only have four hours today to work on it, and I'll have a couple hours tomorrow and just a few hours each day. I got other stuff going on, so I'm just going to putz with it as I can. But again, like I said, I want to paint these with my cast iron paint. If you noticed, and I'll show you again, when I took the drums off, you notice these weren't all rusty. And that was because I painted them with the cast iron paint. So that's going to be what I do first so the paint can start drying. That's a... This is a rear wheel cylinder, this is a front wheel cylinder. And the reason why there's a right and left to these little brackets, you can see the thickness of the line that goes to the rear is much smaller than the line that goes to the front. And I suspect that has to do with the size of the rear wheel cylinders are much smaller than the front ones. The front ones, like I say, do most of your stopping. So let me dig up my cast iron paint. This is what I'm going to paint the wheel cylinders with. And I'm just going to do it with a foam brush. This stuff is, well, uh, you can't read the directions, so much paint over them. But this stuff's pretty old. I've had it since maybe the late 80s, but it's still got that much paint in it. And I love this stuff, so I always paint my master cylinders and wheel cylinders with it. And then they always look like cast iron. They don't get rusty. It just, you know, for the 10 minutes it takes to do it, it's worth it. I'll spray these with brake clean before I paint them so that you get the, that they feel like greasy, you know, they put stuff on them to prevent them from corroding and packaging. And I only got one of these with all four wheel cylinders, but I have a whole drawer of these, so I'm not too worried about that. doesn't take much to paint these and like I say at the end of the day you end up with a wheel cylinder that doesn't turn brown from rust on the exterior. I mean it doesn't really matter they're behind the drums but I don't know this is just the way I am. I just paint everything and uh, just you know makes the job that much nicer. It looks you know like you did something and when you pull the wheels off, it just looks nice, and you don't see a rusty wheel cylinder sitting there. This is a front one. Well, as you can obviously see, all the wheels and brake drums are off. See, you can see when you paint them with that cast iron paint, they stay looking nice, the wheel cylinders. But anyway, put paper down to collect stuff. It's just easier to clean up. Set the drums on some paper. So anyway, what I got to do next is take the master cylinder off. And that way when I disconnect the lines, you know, down here and the ones that go to the back, I don't have to wait for that to drain before it stops dripping out here. I'll just have the fluid in the hydraulic lines that I'll have to catch, which is, a you know, a lot less than what's in here. So I always save when whenever I buy a new master cylinder. I save the little doodads that come in on that's got two different size threads so I'll just thread that in until you know just to keep the mess from going everywhere while I'm I'm bolting it from the car I'm gonna unbolt it from the I'm gonna loosen break that free and then just snug it up with an open end just enough to keep it from dripping and I'll take these nuts off on both sides and then I'll undo the line just pop it off one last thing like I say to wait to drain when I take the hydraulic lines off to swap out the wheel cylinders. There we go, the master's off the booster. I rebuilt this booster a couple years ago, and you can go back in my past videos and check out how to do it. But we got the master off, got this plug, but let's just see what the 
I'm going to dump the fluid out and just see what it looks like for the heck of it. Oh, it's still pretty clean. Yeah, I changed the master when I put the rebuilt booster. That's as clean as a whistle in there. I don't know if that shows up in there or not, but I am reusing the master cylinder. That's, like I say, two years old at the oldest. And I change the fluid in it just about every year now. So hopefully we can make it last. And if not, you know, I'll buy a new one if I ever find issues. Usually when these go bad, you just get a pedal that slowly goes to the floor. They don't usually completely fail. I'm not going to take all the brake hardware off the car. I'm only going to take the uh, springs off here. And then that way I don't have to take everything totally apart on the car. It's hard to do this one-handed, but, you know, I can. All right, and then I can pull the shoes out enough to get these out. So i got to reuse these the new cylinders. And then I can just unbolt the cylinder and bolt the new one in. This one, look, it's already dripping out just from removing that. So is this one. I don't want to get brake fluid everywhere so I'm going to put let me go get another uh, doily to put here so yeah they're both both leaking pretty good you can see why I put paper down it just saves on at cleanup time having to deal with the mess and I got to take this off because I got to undo that to get the wheel cylinder off yeah, I don't know if I can do this one handed or not but yeah alright there we go All right, that's loose enough. I got a broke free. I don't want it to drip out all over the floor yet. I got to paint, get a pan. I got to save this. I'm going to reuse that. There's nothing. I got a bunch of these clips new. I got those brass washers new too. In fact, this I found the other one, so I got both of them. They uh, they only used on the front wheel cylinders. Everything else is double flare. Like I say, I'm not going to video the other side. You do one, this is the clip. I mean, look at that. Yeah, that doesn't need replacing. But, you know, get things loose before you undo your wheel cylinder. Otherwise, you're going to be tightening your wheel cylinder back up. Let's see if I can get a wrench on this. All right, I'm going to, hang on, i got to see if I have the right. Then you want to undo this line which I was putting a wrench on it and pushing. Yeah, so that's that's loose. All right, let me get the line loosened up here so I can get that line out of there. And then I got my little drain thing so that can, can drip into there without making a mess everywhere. And then, you know, by the time I get to the other side, this will be all dripped out. And then I can just take my little dish and I'm replacing all the hydraulic lines. So, you know, I mean, these ones, these ones, I looked in the manual, they've been on the car since 1982, but you can see they, they're just greasy and dirty. They, they wipe out and look like new lines, but the thing is, is being brake fluid absorbs moisture, they rust from the inside out. All right, let me get that fitting off, get that hose off, and I'll get this wheel cylinder off. The little tab there, you got to bend up with a screwdriver right here, too. The uh, brake fluid doesn't look too bad in the in the lines. All right, that's all dripped out. Let me wipe up my mess here. I don't want to be laying in it. Got that tab bent up. I'll throw a socket with the impact gun on there. We'll buzz that off. And there's the old hose. It's not really bad. I mean. You can see some rust inside that. So that's what happens to the inside of the steel tubes. And they rot out. That's why you should, if you have mild steel tubes on your old car that you're putting wheel cylinders and hoses on, there's a good chance your steel lines are going to come apart too. So, you know, it's always a good idea to change them. I'm not going to, 
I don't want all this brake dust in my face, so I'm not going to blow this out. I'm just going to leave it. It doesn't hurt anything, and uh, I'm just going to wipe it off here so the impact gun doesn't uh, blow that around. And uh, All right, let me get that wheel cylinder off. So you can see that thing comes off pretty darn easy. And this is the worst wheel cylinder. This one was leaking on both sides. They hadn't leaked externally yet. Caught them before they leaked into the, the brake linings. But we'll pop these apart towards the end of the video anyway. Maybe we'll just pop this one apart. I'll get rebuild kits and maybe rebuild them. We'll see. But I'm going to bead blast all this stuff. You can see that washer that's on this. And you can see I, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I had... Uh, Last time I put wheel cylinders on this, I'd put no C's on these, so that wouldn't be a bear to get off, but that's all in pretty good shape. I bead blasted this and uh, put some no C's on the threads. I also cleaned the threads up, too, so you know, you want to be able to make sure this tightens down and make sure you put the right wheel cylinder on the right, you know, put them on the correct side, and... Uh, Otherwise, you won't be able to get your lines on and bleed them. They have to, the fittings have to point that way on these front wheel cylinders. If they point towards the front of the car, then you're not going to have much luck. And, um, you know, you can't run the lines to the front. There was a little notch in that that fits in a little groove, I think. All right, let me run that down with the impact gun. We got one one wheel cylinder, and then I'll put the hydraulic hose onto there, and then I'll do the other side, and then I'll replace all the steel lines. New wheel cylinder is on, and one thing you want to do when you put your springs back on, always put this spring on first because the the drums rotate this way. So if this accidentally catches the drum or something, you know, they're not, these springs aren't too far from the drum. If something happens, it doesn't pop your spring off. This spring will go over it and prevent it from getting popped off. So it is a little tidbit that, you know, you just pay attention and always put this one on first. And then this one. And then that way, again, if your, you know, drum doesn't, won't pull a spring off accidentally. That's why, you know, I just do that that way. That's, you know, doesn't hurt. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these shoes out and I'm going to put a little dab of white grease on each of the touch points. Because that way, when you release the brakes, they don't squeak. They don't go like that, you know, every time you take your foot off the brake pedal. Clean this little doodad up, a little lacquer thing. I didn't want to bead blast this because it has a coating on it that kind of protects it from corrosion. So a little lacquer thinner did that good. I'm going to throw this line on and then uh, go change the other wheel cylinder. And I'm not going to video that because you just saw how I did it on here. To put grease on the back of these, I just popped. There's a little, that's a hold down spring. So I just popped it off here really quick. And then I'll show you where I put the, the grease, I just put it on a tip of a screwdriver. And then I can pull a shoe back. And you can clearly see these little spots where the shoe's riding. It doesn't, there's three of them on each shoe. It doesn't take a lot of grease. You don't want it getting on your, on your shoes. So anyway, that's probably enough for each. Keep them from squeaking. So just to, you know, show you what I'm doing here. All right, let me throw that back together and do the other shoe. When you're all done, I got grease on both sides now. Just take the palm of your hands and make sure the shoes do that because that's how the duo servo works. So when you apply the brakes and both these shoes come out, the turning of the drum pulls it that way. So it pushes, helps push this shoe more into the, into the drum. So on duo servos, your smaller shoe is the front shoe, your larger shoe is the rear shoe.
drum installed, rubber hose installed. I'll do all like I see the steel lines here shortly, but this is the this is what I use for those things on the shoe shoes uh, between the backing plate and the shoe. And like I say, don't be excessive with that stuff. Another thing too is these rubber seals. If you can't get your little plunger into them, do not use motor oil. Do not use WD-40. Never use anything mineral-based or silicone or anything on this rubber because it'll swell up and it'll ruin it. Always use brake assembly fluid. And that way you won't have problems with your seals. Even if you rebuild these and you wash them out with mineral spirits, clean them really good with brake clean. And you either use brake fluid or this stuff to reassemble your, your uh, wheel cylinders. And I don't know if this is hydroscopic or not because I've rebuilt things and put them away, stored them away. doesn't really say on it. But it's kind of like really thick and gooey, like a really super thick, greasy brake fluid. It works pretty good. About to get started back on the Bel Air. This is the next day, obviously. This is Sunday. It's Easter Sunday, so happy Easter, everybody. I'm sure this might be out maybe quite a bit later than today, but happy Easter anyway, belated happy Easter. So I was looking in the maintenance manual. I wrote to see the exact data when I replaced these wheel cylinders and it was 1984. So I think these wheel cylinders, the new cylinders I'm putting on the car will probably, you know, they'll last as long as I'm around anyway, I hope. So, but anyway, 1984 was last, I re replaced all the steel hydraulic lines. I made all new ones it, because like I say, it blew the one that went to the rear right in here and that's the only way you really lose brakes totally on these old systems single reservoir systems is if you blow a hydraulic line I was fortunate it was a pinhole and I wasn't far from home so I still had brakes so the pedal would gradually go to the floor I could still easily stop the car and the master cylinder which is right here I replaced just about a year ago so I'm just, like I said, just flushed this out. It's already flushed. It's spotlessly clean on the inside. And it's, you know, ready to go back on the car. Let me get to work on this side. Let me get that wheel cylinder on. Like I say, I videoed the other side. I'm not going to video this side. I'll video one of the rears and I'll video some of the change into the steel tubing. Well, the right side or passenger side is done. And when you put these things together, make sure that you get this little thing that pushes the shoe out into the rubber boot not just pushing against it and also make sure they're in your shoe so they don't you know just miss the shoe I've seen brake jobs that have come in because they had no pedal and then you know on dual systems to where this part wasn't into the shoe you know and it just blew the wheel cylinder apart and Get everything caked in oil. But anyway, if this is this side's done, I got the hose on. You can see I spilled some brake fluid on the control arm, so I wiped it off. So you can see how clean they just you clean them off, they clean up really nice. That spring would look just as nice, you know. The looks like I got some brake fluid on the chassis. Their brake fluid will strip paint. It's glycol based and it'll wreck your paint on your on your body so don't get it on anything that you care about it looks like i got a little grease right there and you know touching these ball joints and then you touch the brake something and you get it on the the grease from the joints on the brake so i try and wipe all this crud up when i do these kind of things now those are covered in brake fluid, but you can see what I'm talking about. That's what you want the the uh, push rod to go into. This one only leaked on one side. The other cylinder on the driver's side was the one that leaked out of both sides. I don't know, like I say, this video is over a couple days, so if I'm repeating myself or a little convoluted, 
Sorry, that's life. Got the wheel cylinder up. This side has the parking brake on it, so there's a little bit more, you know, you got to deal with that component for the parking brake. There's the old one. There's the new one. The brake line. I think I replaced the rear, the lines on the axle housing when I changed the diff housing because it leaked gear lube because there was a crack by the drain plug. But anyway, we... Everything else, you can see the lines over there, I think. The gas line, which I replaced, and the back when I put brake lines on, I put gas lines on it too. But we're going to pull all that stuff apart here shortly and put new brake lines, the stainless steel ones on. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll replace the fuel line from the tank to the pump too. Who knows? I replaced that though when I did the the hydraulic lines back in 84. All right, there's only two bolts that hold this wheel cylinder in. I got to put the little um, things will be easier to put in with this one out. The front ones, I could because of these things here, you can't get the boots on and off. Um, I don't know if you can see those or not. Can't get the boots on and off, with, and that's to keep the wheel cylinder from blowing apart if you push the pedal when the, when the drum's off. And uh, so anyway, let me... Uh, Put the little pins in, we'll bolt that on and get the side the rest of the way together. You can see the fluid doesn't look too pretty, does it? You can see there's all the grease has gone on those points where the shoe rubs. I just took this this little spring thing off here to release each shoe and then I'll uh, put grease on there and then I'll put that back on. But yeah, that... The rear on this car when I'd release the brakes would go and it drove me nuts. So we're gonna correct that right now. That's why I'm doing that to all, all the brakes on the whole car, put a little bit of this stuff here on it, and that'll solve that. The side is together, you can kind of see I think where it's bolted in there. But anyway, we'll get the drum on and then go tackle the other side. All right, well, I'm to the right rear of the last wheel cylinder, the one that wasn't leaking, which I'm replacing as preventative maintenance, but the boneheads that sent me these wheel cylinders sent me two left rear wheel cylinders instead of right and the left. So you can kind of see the differences where the hydraulic line comes into the wheel cylinder. It comes in from this way. If I come in from this way, the line won't work. So being Easter Sunday, I just can't run to the auto parts and get one. So I'll email the boneheads I got this from and get another one on the way. In the meantime, I can replace the, the hydraulic lines and whatnot. But I can't go any further on this without the correct wheel cylinder. While I'm waiting for a new wheel cylinder, I installed the master and I'm going to Start changing the brake lines on the front and start getting the lines routed to the rear. So hopefully when my correct wheel cylinder arrives, all I have to do is put it on and bleed the brake. I'm going to show you what I've been doing here because you might be interested. Anyway, I got the, that on and that on and all up here connected but I'm changing the brake line that goes around the front right now and I got the lines off disconnected there and I'm about to take that block off and then I'm going to change that front line so I can thread it onto the block before I tighten it down the back line I'll have enough movement to where I can get it in and uh, but I put the little line on the block as you can see. So we're just plugging away at it and like I say this is the this is the next line to go in. This one goes around the front. I'll show you because I gotta take the, the cross member off or not the, the the splash pan, not the cross member. Get underneath here. Probably have to take this this sheet metal off anyway. Because, you know, kind of get it out of these clips. I'm going to replace these clips, too. So anyway, there we go. We're getting plugging away at it. And this power steering line right here is leaking. So I think I'll order new power steering for between the spool valve and the 
slave cylinder. I noticed this was really wet and I wiped it up, but looks like it's seeping right around that, that compression fitting there. And right here, wasn't looking at the screen, sorry. I never look at my screen. I just kind of hold the camera around. But anyway, I'm gonna start uh, unbolting the sheet metal so I can get it out of here to access that line. Then once that's on, all I got is the rear stuff, which will be a lot easier than this front stuff. It would be super easy to have done this with the engine out. I did the lines on the Galaxy with the engine out and Really that, you know, probably on the assembly line, they put the brake lines on before the bodies probably even put on the chassis. All right, let me get to it. These are the old ones. This one's a little bent, as you can see. But what happens is the part where the flare seats in there kind of gets, conforms to the line that was on it. And then you put a new line on, they generally, you got to really reef them to keep them from leaking. So anyway, we'll just, we're putting new ones of those on. And uh, right there, and then the one for the differential. All right, let me, uh, I got the one out. It was a little bit of a bear because the exhaust manifold here. The bolt was down in, I don't know. Let me get that right here. The bolt was down in to where my ratchet was hitting this part of the manifold. The bolt is, um, where the bolt goes in is like right in here somewhere, I don't know, right there. There are my thumbs, my fingers on the hole and my ratchet was was hitting the manifold there. So it took a little bit of fuss, but I got it out. It was really tight. So let me get, th this is the that line that goes across the front. And that one's the one to the rear axle. Well, I'm calling it quits for the night. I pulled the the pan down so I could get this this brake line out, but I can't get it out without this out. And that's hitting the lower radiator hose. And I'm not taking the hose off and I'm not lifting the engine. And I can't get the brake line with that in, so I'm going to call it a night. Tomorrow I might undo the sway control bar and see if lowering that can get that out because there's no way I can pull that back to about there and I can get that loose but not loose enough to get it out of there. So I'll just leave this until tomorrow. I just ripped this brake line out just because I wanted to get it out of there so I could paint the cross member there, just blow a little paint on it. And uh, tomorrow I'll drop the sway control so I can get the new one up there. But tomorrow the paint will be dry. I don't want to be working with wet paint. So and I definitely needed a little touch up. So there we go. Well, that was a bit of work to get this uh, brake line in. But it's basically in place. So I'm going to connect it up to the block there. Before I fasten it rigid, I'm going to get it. The thread started in all the blocks and whatnot. But yeah, I had to pull this. I had to lower the, I couldn't take the sway control off because it was hitting the, the idler arm and this bracket and the power steering, but loosening it up allowed me to move this pan enough to where I could get at the, get the line up in there. And so I think that'll work. And I ordered new, new these things you can see they're kind of hammered out and i ordered this line that's already getting oily there i wiped that completely clean and so and i've been pushing the steering linkage back and forth so fluid's been flowing through that because in order to get that line fish through there i had to keep moving the steering linkage and uh that made life a lot easier too but these hoses they're probably, you know, probably 35 plus years old. So maybe I'll, I'm not going to flush the cooling system now, but it probably wouldn't hurt to flush it and put, I have brand new hoses down in the basement that are probably 20 years old anyway. I should order another set because who knows how hard that rubber is. But anyway, that 
Cross, remember I touched up after I get this together, I'm going to cover all this up and I'm going to touch up the oil pan, wipe it down with some lacquer thinner, wipe this down with lacquer thinner really good. And the frame is just painted with Rust-Oleum spray can, so, or brush or whatever I painted. The control arms are acrylic enamel. These are just Rust-Oleum and that's why I use Rust-Oleum. You can see why it's just super easy to touch up or paint up, you know, and keep it looking good. I just cover everything up around where I'm going to paint so I don't get overspray. It's annoying when you see people paint and they got overspray all over everything, you know, the fuel pump or fuel lines or, you know, tags or whatever. But anyway, let's, let me get these lines hooked up and, and I got another rear wheel cylinder on the way. The guy's sending me another one, but I'll get all the lines running. And uh, as soon as the wheel cylinder comes, I can get the system blood. Again, why I used Rust-Oleum on the undercarriage parts, I just gave this a quickie spray. You see all the undercoating on this side. But anyway, it looks better with a quick coat of black on it. And I also uh, touched up the oil pan and a lot of stuff under here I'll give you a shot. And I got the rest of the brake lines on for the front, the little little clips. Well, that's painted up. The oil pan kind of touched the oil pan up. Kind of give you a look and you can see back here where I'm going to um, the bottom line is the brake line. The top one's the gas line. You see the road draft tube too. Starter motor. So anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd show a little bit of the underneath the shift linkage. What happens on these cars when the three on the column shifter doesn't work anymore? It's because the bushings and all these linkages wear out, like here and here and here, and then this where it attaches there, that wears out. You can see it's a little loose there, but it's nothing to where it's going to affect the way it shifts. And that's all nice and tight. I took this apart a long time ago and welded in all the rods and holes and everything that was worn out. And I uh, got it fitting pretty good again. Put all new grommets and stuff in all the, all the linkage in the column. Shifter works really good. But yeah, we got things looking okay. I think um, there's a, I don't know, you can see the oil sending unit up there maybe above the oil filter. And then you can see a cast iron on the block where there's no paint. So I don't know if it's leaking out of the oil, oil that was oily. And it's not the sending unit. And I'm thinking maybe the, the head gasket's leaking. Leaking oil out of the head gasket, I'm guessing. But anyway, we'll deal with that if it doesn't blow until we uh, rebuild the engine. But overall, everything looks good underneath here. All the control arm bushings look good. I was looking at everything while I'm under here. And it all looks pretty darn good. A little Muncie 318 gearbox. It's a 318 means it's a three speed with an 18 inch tail shaft. And Muncie made these gearboxes, not Saginaw. So when people say they're Saginaw gearboxes, they're, they're really Muncie. Saginaw made the steering gear. Let's see if we can see the inside of the road draft tube. Yeah, it looks pretty clear. A little bit of rust and crud in there, but overall it looks pretty darn good. Alright, I'm going to get out from under the car and get some more things done. I was going to show you the, let's see if this will show up too. There's where the, I don't know, maybe it doesn't show up, but the, the brake line thing, I'll edit it out if it doesn't show up. There's the brake line driver's side. All of it here, going down to that brass block. 
and then like you saw it goes underneath the the cross member down in there I don't know if I can see it from here whether the camera shows it or not and then it comes up over here and goes to this junction block and then this is the this is the old line onto the rear brakes so I gotta take the, I'm gonna start taking the all the lines off to the rear and changing them now so everything is hooked up to the front and the key to doing this is just leave this loose you know I left everything loose just kind of finger tight and I didn't bolt that block down and I started all the lines and then I bolted that in and tightened up all the lines and everything but this shouldn't be a problem because there's to the line to the rear because it's really flex a lot of room there and I can wait to clip it into the clip until after I get it started in the in the block there so anyway we'll have all new stainless steel lines on the car looking forward to never having to change them again they've been kind of a little bit of a bite but you know that's part of working on cars anyway it gave me a chance to do some things like paint this up and uh, that's dry to the touch. So I might go and have some lunch and then I'll install this and start on the rest of the line. Going to give the uh, brake drums, the front ones, a quick coat of paint. The back ones are still pretty good, but the front ones, they need a coat of paint. Yeah, they don't look too bad, but anyway, I've got the paint. Might as well just tidy them up a little bit here there you get the picture I don't need to video tip painting the whole thing this is another day and I just thought I would show kind of what I got to do today you can see everything under here is pretty clean the oil leak I think because this side was Leaking a little bit in that same area. I think it's the valve covers on both sides because you could I could see where it had run down the head a little bit. And uh, so it might be leaky valve covers. But I also think the intake is leaking up there. I don't know if that shows up or not. You can see where the road draft tube goes in, I think. But I think the intake is leaking at the back too. The rear corners, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I was told the engine had been rebuilt, but I doubted it because it was so filthy. But, you know, and then I shoved the inspection camera down the spark plug holes, as you remember a year or so ago, and the pistons are standard, they're not overbore. But the timing gear had been replaced, the timing chain and gear, you could see that clearly been replaced. So maybe it was like a backyard rebuild, so to speak. You know, maybe they just put timing chain in it and thought that was a rebuild. I don't know. But anyway, the timing gear and chains are, does have a steel gear. So somebody's been in the engine, but I don't think it's been rebuilt because it had standard pistons. But anyway, I did rebuild the 318 Muncie here because it had a bad synchro clutch I couldn't get it in second gear anymore and there's no leaks I resealed it all nice and clean and you can see back here a little rust on that yoke but there's no no leaks you can see where it used to have a greasable u-joint in there and you can see when the grease would flick out it kind of softened the undercoating and it came down you see the original primer on the floor pans you can see some of the I mean that's bare metal this is a little surface rusted but you can still see some of the original paint on the frame and especially over here where I gotta do the brake lines try and get the light such to where you, you can see where a lot of the paint's just bare or where the metal is just bare but you can see the paint bare the paint original paint from the factory and undercoating and the brake line that i made that i gotta get down and that's one of the clips that i got replacement clips so i don't know can you see it 
I can't tell what shows up in the video with that little tiny screen on this GoPro. But anyway, we're going to change out. You can see I had the drive shaft had a big dent in it, so I had the front tube redone. Hey. Plus, the, the front U-joint was bad when I purchased the car. And it hammered almost the yoke out to where there was very little left in one end. So this is new. I had this replaced. When I pulled the gearbox to um, change the the clutch, the shift clutch in it, the, they call it a shift clutch. And uh, this, I had this replaced. And I had a new front tube put on, new center bearing, new center drive shaft, but that's still the original drive shaft to the rear there. You can see where the resonators used to be. And, uh, but overall, the undercarriage of this car isn't in bad shape considering, you know, it's age, what, 65 year old car. You can see where the goo from the undercoating there too. You can see a fitting there because back in the day you couldn't buy rolls of brake line like I like to do. So I had to join it right there. That's the only joint in the line to the rear. So I might undo that just to make it easier to pull it out. And uh, anyway, I'm going to be under the car for a while and I just thought I'd show you some things. I'm not going to video pulling greasy old brake lines out and putting new ones in that's kind of a no-brainer that's the fuel line right there to the pump and uh so anyway let me get started and we'll get this tackled so i can get this thing together that rust on that yoke just wipes off my finger so i might just clean that up and put a little gear oil or something on it to prevent it from rusting further there's only a few fuel line clips I can replace because they're mounted on top of the frame. So that is one right there. The fuel line and brake line goes in there. Got them both popped out. And uh, I think there's another one just down a little bit further. But the ones that I can get at, I'll replace. The ones that I can't, I'm just going to leave alone. But they're not broken. So I'm just going to reuse those ones. But I think the one up here... And the frame is, that one's still usable, but there is one right here that's totally missing. And then there is another one somewhere right, right here, I think, that's broken. So I'll, uh, I'll change those two in any on the very rear that I can... I can get at that go to the axle anyway I'm going to get it unbolted from the axle now you can see I just put some extra jack stands I just don't trust jack stands or jacks or anything so the more the better usually you have big blocks of wood but I don't know what happened to them that's the line to the rear got all the brake lines off now that was a long line these were on the axle this one and this one and the front wheels, the master cylinder, and across the frame. So these look like they're 40 years old. You know, I put them on 40 years ago, but they look good because I never drive the car in fall weather. I mean, you know, it's rarely seen rain, probably in the last 40 years, maybe 10 times. The clips I was talking about, you just put a punch in there and hit it, and it spreads those open enough to... to um, Hold this clip to the chassis but most of these are on the kind of top bit so I can't get at them but I'll use I think three of them I think two of them are where I can't access them so I'll change these three seeing that uh, I can access those three and we'll just save these for extras if one of these breaks or if I ever have the body off the chassis you know I've talked about thought about restoring this car my first car that I've had 46 years, but it wouldn't be the same car and I wouldn't want to drive it anymore if I tore it all apart and completely restored it, you know. It'd be nice to strip it down to the chassis and redo it, but that's not going to happen. I just like it the way it is. It's a fun driver, just as it is. This was the rear brake hose. It's not in bad shape, but, you know, it is 40 years old. So it's going to get replaced at a little rub mark or something right there. But other than that, yeah, it's not bad for 40 years of use. 
I guess keeping the car in the garage out of the weather makes all the difference in the world in the longevity of this kind of stuff. This is the correct block that I'm going to have to clean up. This is the incorrect one in line tube scent. You can see why. Let me grab this other one here too. See how the lines are situated? One goes in the one side, and one goes in the one goes in the rear, and the one goes in the side. To, so you know, line can't hit that, which is for the this bar here. That block came in, and I got it in the brake line. Everything's hooked up. It system's ready to bleed and check for leaks. But I'll tell you what. These things are just a pain. I tried to replace the three that were broken. I only replaced two because the third one, I just can't get a good hit on it. They were definitely put in before the body was on the chassis and the drivetrain was installed in the chassis. Yeah, these things are a nightmare. So anyway, this is the one I couldn't get in. I just finally just gave up. But that line that runs the length of the car yeah the fit on that is kind of not as good as the, everything else fit really good but i had to bend that one a little bit and you know just by hand but anyway we're ready to bleed some brakes out here and you know it's not perfect but i drive it so yeah but i mean it's beautiful an 89 grand wagon here it came from arkansas uh, I had like 26,000 miles on it. I mean, look at the seats are like new, the interior, the headliner. This thing's like new still. Yeah. Mm. Sweet. <laughs> but, uh, so I was saying that I have a, a 52 Airstream. Do you? Uh, that I converted into a food truck. And I take this, I, I basically uh, tow the Airstream with this and it's a big hit. Uh, I bet. Yeah. What a cool vehicle towing a cool trailer. Yeah, you got the plug for the electric brakes and everything. Yep. Yeah, what's it got, a 360? 304, 360? Uh, 360? Yeah, this thing's sweet. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find one of these any cleaner. That's about as clean as they come. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, this thing is amazing. If you ever decide to sell it. <laughs> yeah. If you ever decide to sell it. But we know. Um, do you have any, do you ever go out, do you ever spend any time near Harsons Island? I have, yeah, in the past. Right, because I'm looking for a boat mechanic or somebody that can help me out. Um, Sounds good, too. Yeah. Not bad. It's like I said, not perfect, but you know what? I'm not afraid to drive them. They're not supposed to be perfect. Old cars, there's always something you got to do on them, and that one in there is a testament to it. <laughs> Take care. That thing's awesome. Got the reservoir full, and I'm just doing it with my vacuum pump right now because that's just the way I'm doing it. So I got the little, I had to put a rag there to keep my wrench so that the, the bleeder stays open but you can kind of see the apparatus that i use on there should go get my fancy light so you can see what i'm doing here but anyway i'm just i don't really need to be under the car but I might go get my electric vacuum pump for ac work and use it there's still no fluid coming in from the master although I've topped the master off a couple times already yeah there's still no fluid coming out of that hose I'm gonna go get my electric vacuum pump save myself I, some fluid. I'm gonna put some 
vacuum to it. I can't, I gotta hold that on there. I'll have to check the master cylinder in a minute. But anyway, I'll just uh, get some video on the fluids out. Probably take a moment or two. So I'm getting fluid now. You can see when I hook it up the vacuum. Got a long ways to go to get the fluid to here. So I'm going to do this to all four wheels and then I'm going to do them all again. Alright, that's probably enough. Enough fluid there and we'll go do the other wheels. Back on all four wheels. Got the brakes completely done, bled. It helped bleeding the brakes so I didn't have to pressurize the master like I was going to. And uh, I got most of the fluid through with the vacuum pump and then just to where it would pump up and then we just did the old fashioned way. But I had two leaks. You know, I stand on the brake pedal for a few minutes. And I had a leak here, and I tightened that up, and I had a leak right there. And that fitting, both of them from the first... Anyway, I just all I had to do was snug them up a bit more, and I pulled the drums to make sure after I held the brakes on, none of the wheel cylinders were leaking, and checked every fitting and connection on the car, and everything... There's one of the connections. Everything is uh, done. And the only thing I didn't put on was one clip because I couldn't get a swing on the hammer with the punch to knock it in the hole. And uh, obviously those were put on, you know, why the frame was just a bare frame rolling down the line. But anyway, we're going to, we'll take it out for a test drive tomorrow. It's a little late now. I want to loosen up the sway control now that it's sitting and I'll do that in the morning and make sure that's just kind of bounce it a few times and tighten it up just to make sure everything's settled in where it's supposed to be because it was jacked up and you should really do everything with it on the suspension. Like when you put control arm bushings in, don't tighten the bolts that hold the, the bite into the bushing until it's sitting like on the ground, you know, don't, don't tighten up these bolts or the ones on the underneath so that the bushing can be, so it's not twisted while it's sitting in its natural state. You want them in there just to be in their normal state. So after you set it down, then go around and tighten them all up. And you do the same with the sway control. So if you're doing it on a hoist, you gotta set it down, roll the car, and then tighten everything up so everything's settled where it's supposed to be. I did roll the car back and forth, but I didn't, haven't started it yet, but it's got a, got a really good brake pedal. I adjusted the brakes up and everything. Oh, geez, I took my towel out. I don't know if I'm just going to sit on the edge. Uh, you can't see. But, yeah, the, the brake pedal is really good. So, anyway, we'll take it for a little drive tomorrow and see how the brakes work. I got the car back down on the suspension, so I loosened up the stabilizers and made sure all the rubbers were seated properly, and they are, and we're ready to go for a test drive. I checked for leaks again this morning, don't see any leaks, so let's uh, crank the car up and see how the brakes work. Hook the battery back up, set the clock so it keeps time, so that's why I set it. And uh, it's been a while since I've started it again, but let's uh, do a cold start. Turn the radio off so it doesn't start playing on you. Alright, we'll let it warm up and go for a ride. It's got a Got a really good brake pedal. So hopefully the Yeah, even with the parking brake released. So hopefully it's all good. Let me uh get the car out. I want to clean the garage out a little bit and then we'll go for a ride. Well it seems to be stopping straight. I brought my brake spoon just in case if I had to, you know, readjust the brakes because the 
the uh, if one side's tighter than the other, it will pull when you go to stop. But anyway, it's it's stopping good. We got a awesome brake pedal. Anyway, we got a green light, so I got to get going here. Yeah, it's all good. I think the brakes work fine now. I'll check for leaks when I get home. I just went for about a 30 mile ride and the brakes work perfect in the car. And uh, it seems to handle a little better, but I don't think that is as much as uh, sway, new sway control stuff as it is repacking the wheel bearings, you know, and so there isn't any looseness in the wheel bearings, but doesn't, the bias plies tend to want to pull a car around on cracks in the road, and it wasn't doing it as much. And I think it's because I repacked the wheel bearings, but also rotated the tires, too. So, anyway, I got a... We'll see another video coming up on refoaming the seat and installing seat belts. I'm leaving all my jack stuff out here to raise it up to install the seat belts. And here's all the old... Hydraulic system, sway control bushings, all that stuff. So all that's done. Did a lot of maintenance stuff well needed on the car. So once I get seat belts in, and I still got to put the two power steering hoses on. I did, did get them, but I'll do that when I have the seat out to do the seat belts and stuff. I'll put the power steering hoses on. Then they're, they're not leaking to where it's an issue or anything so that's why I just you know it's just barely seeping out of the one hose and I just noticed I was when I was checking for brake fluid leaks after I got back you know you got to make sure you don't have any fluid leaks but just ever so slightly damp just around the edge where the hose goes into that metal fitting on just this hose so I'm going to replace them both when I'm tearing into the putting seat belts in but yeah no no leaks all the uh, sway control is nicely settled in and no rattles no squeaks no pulls no nothing before when I'd released the brakes you could hear the shoes contracting on one of the rear drums it had a little squeak that drove me nuts when I'd take my foot off the brake so putting that little bit of grease on those uh, you'll see in the video I'm sure you saw it, it solved that issue from that noise but anyway this video is going to be about an hour long i'm just uploading a 20 minute video and it's so far it's been five hours and 20 minutes and still got 15 minutes to upload so uploading to youtube is ultra slow i can upload anywhere else it's fine it's just youtube is just really really slow for me so this video might take you know 10 12 hours to upload but so be it but anyway I'm going to end this break video. It's, this video is covered over 10 days, so if uh, it's a little convoluted, sorry. It's just because, you know, I'd work on it here and there as I could and waiting on parts and whatnot. You know, I got all the parts before I started, but they sent two left rear wheel cylinders, so I had to wait for the right one. They gave me the wrong junction block for the axle for the brake line so i had to you know wait for another one and you know so just kind of took time but i did a little extra i put those straight in those sway brackets as you saw in a past video and uh repacked the wheel bearings which is in a past video and i show how to set the preload on the bearings in that video too these are after you uh put them together you torque them to 28 foot pounds by turning them then you back them off to zero and then you set them at 12 foot pounds so these bearings have 12 foot pounds of torque on them because they're ball bearings but anyway the old 348 ran perfect like i say did about 30 miles on this beautiful 76 degrees out right now so anyway that's it for this video if you like the video, definitely hit the thumbs up icon as it helps me out a lot. And if you like my channel, that 348 engine icon there that pops up will help you subscribe. And thank you for watching my video.